It seems to be another normal day in the city until suddenly, a traffic jam causes a commotion among the local drivers. A businessman has suddenly stopped his car in the middle of the street because for an unknown reason, he's gone completely blind. A group of people approach him to help and a man volunteers to drive him home. However, as soon as they get there and the businessman gets off, the thief drives away with the car. The businessman is left lost outside, but the thief returns seconds later pretending to be a different person to help him reach his apartment, offering his company for the afternoon. This time it doesn't work, the businessman has learned his lesson and kicks the thief out once he's safe at home. A few hours later, the businessman's wife arrives and as soon as she learns about her husband's blindness, she takes him to see a specialist. Since it's an emergency, the doctor allows them to cut in line and go first. Unfortunately no matter what machine the doctor uses to check the businessman's eyes, he can't find any signs of damage or illness, which means it must be neurological. The businessman will have to go to a hospital and get some tests done there, although the doctor has never heard of something like this before. After the couple leaves, the doctor receives his other patients, which include a child, a woman with sunglasses and a man with an eye patch. Meanwhile, the thief is driving the stolen car around town and trying to avoid the cops until he has no choice but to pull over because he has gone blind as well. He ends up going to the police for help, and when an officer takes him to his old home, his ex-wife refuses to let him in. Later in the evening, Sunglasses woman goes to a hotel and after asking the bartender for a drink, she joins her client upstairs. Their meeting goes well, but the afterglow is ruined when she suddenly starts freaking out as her vision goes white too. The doctor goes home to have a lovely dinner with his wife, and all goes well until they wake up the next morning and he also finds himself unable to see. They call the hospital to warn them about a possible infection going around, and they're believed because the child is there too, unable to see as well. Soon cases of sudden blindness begin appearing all over the city, and the government begins taking the first steps to stop it. The doctor's office is closed by the authorities, and the doctor himself is taken away to be quarantined. His wife can't stand the idea of being away from him, so she decides to lie and pretend she's blind too in order to be quarantined with him. The couple is taken to a derelict asylum, which is completely empty and not even other doctors will be staying there with them. Each ward has a phone to contact the guards outside, but it can only be used for emergencies and each ward must have a representative as the only person that can use it. Soon, more people start arriving, like the thief, the sunglasses woman, the kid, and the businessmen. The doctor and his wife agree to keep her sight a secret, and by pretending she explored and memorized the place when they arrived, the doctor's wife becomes a guide for everyone when they need help with things like going to the bathroom. During their first trip out of the room, the thief walks behind sunglasses woman and gets a little too handsy, which makes her respond by kicking him in the leg. Her heel causes a serious wound that the doctor and his wife end up bandaging with a shirt, because there's no first aid kit around. Later, the doctor's wife can't sleep, thinking about a possible infection of the thief's leg and afraid she may wake up blind too. The doctor tries to get frisky with her, but she prefers to take a walk to deal with her worries. The next morning, more people arrive, and the businessman gets to reunite with his wife while the kid laments that his mother hasn't shown up yet. The doctor and his wife try to talk to the guards and ask for help for the thief's leg, but the guards don't cooperate, they just point their weapons at them and make them return to their room under threat. Sometime later, they receive their first box of food, which is as bad as a school or prison cafeteria, there's also not enough of it. The doctor's wife tries using the emergency phone to ask for more food and a first aid kit, but nobody picks up her call except for an answering machine where she leaves plenty of messages. Weeks start to pass and each day, more and more infected people are sent to the asylum. The doctor's wife ties a cloth line between wards as a guide and the doctor's chosen as representative of ward 1, but keeping order soon becomes impossible. Since everyone is blind, they soon stop caring about tidiness, and people begin wandering around without clothes and relieving themselves in the middle of the hallway. The businessman tries to keep his mood up by chatting with his wife about their young days, but his wife can't stand to even think about happier times. One afternoon, the doctor's wife hears a noise and discovers Eyepatch Man has a radio with him that he has been listening to in private. She convinces him to share the news with everyone, since they're all desperate to know what's happening outside. Eyepatch Man explains